Hello everyone, welcome back to another painting tutorial. I thought I would do this and get it out midweek because uh, Bulge British are coming. Um, I know this isn't going to be in the new starter set, but it is going to be using the same um, paint scheme. So for any people painting up uh, British for the first time or any new people into the hobby, so it might be helpful uh, start. Um, I would definitely advise picking up the Colours of War book. I think it's fantastic. I didn't buy one myself, but my friend gave it to me. And I didn't realise how valuable it was um, in just everything. I think it's brilliant. So um, it's going to be a nice, quick and simple painting tutorial uh, as my style is. It's done very quick, super efficient, um, with as few steps as possible, just to get your models onto the table as quickly as possible. It won't really win you any awards, but from a distance, it looks okay. Uh, so um, we will start off um, just after the base coat. Okay, so here we have the model base coated. Now, luckily for me, I had a few drops left in my uh, Plastic Soldier Company uh, tin of um, British uh, late war spray. Um, so that has shaved off a little bit. So um, if you can't find a um, British base coating and you haven't got the little uh, airbrushes, uh, I would say base coat it either grey or... Um, brown so uh, leather brown or uniform grey from army painter usually does the trick and then you're going to have to get your base coat and brush out and you're going to be doing it in russian uniform uh, vallejo color uh, it used to be called firefly green when they did their little change their names on their paint uh, a while back so russian uniform all over it and then once you've done that and it's dry first step what we're going to be doing is uh, the road wheels and the tank tracks uh, using uh, contrast black templar and that's all you're going to need on those uh, one step and it's because it's nice and thin it's, it's quite easy to apply and uh, makes it a bit easier and um, this is my OP um, if it was another um, tank I would put a little bit on the end of the barrel as well look like it's been firing but since this isn't actually a real barrel I won't be doing it although would they paint it a little bit black to make it look like it's been firing uh, who knows um, but they removed the um, gun just so they can have a little bit more maps uh, in their turret since it's an OP. So um, do the tank tracks, the road wheels, and don't forget the extra bits of track and uh, road wheels that you might have on the tank itself. So we'll do that, let it dry, and we'll come back. Okay, so that is done. Um, so what we're going to start moving on to now is the stowage stuff on the hull of the tank. So we're going to start with doing all the tool handles on the tank. And we're going to be doing that with Vallejo Flat Earth. Okay, so you can see they are done. Make sure you have a good look around and make sure you get them all. So next we're going to be doing the jerry cans. And we're also going to be doing the ammo box on the 50 cal. Uh, using um, Citadel Castell and Green. Okay, so that is all done. There's a little bit of sheen on stuff because uh, it is still wet and she painting and showing you straight away. So next up on the tank, you see we've got some bundles of canvas. We're going to be doing them next. So you can really do them any camouflage colour you want, greys, browns, khakis, but I'm going to be doing mine uh, with US uh, Field Drab, another Vallejo one. Okay, so that's their uh, canvas done, and doing it all in this order, because basically it enables you to uh, the paint to dry, and then you can go back and do the other little bits and bobs on it. So um, now what I'm going to do is going to take the turret off. So um, any crates and wooden boxes, I'm going to be doing these ones next, so we have got one right by here. So we're going to be doing that using Citadel XV88. Okay, so that crate is done, so now what we're going to be doing, we're going to be going over the metal areas of the tank, so the tools, um, the caps on the jerry cans, the 50 cal uh, headlights, and don't forget there's a little machine gun as well, a uh, coax machine gun at the front of the tank, and we'll be doing that using uh, Army Painter Gun Metal. Okay, so that's the metal areas done, so the headlights, the 50 cal, um, the tools, and you see the caps and the jerry cans and whatnot. So next we're going to do any straps. Um, so basically the thing binding the canvas together and these jerry cans. Uh, we're going to be doing that with Vallejo um, Green Grey. 
Okay, so that's all the straps and bindings done. So what I would do now is uh, any areas you've uh, accidentally gone over, um, I go back over in special areas that maybe the base coat um, hasn't quite got. See, the more I've been painting this model, the more I see uh, little bits of areas uh, that the uh, spray has missed. So I go over that, and once that's done and everything is dry, we can shade the model. Uh, some of you might be surprised with this one, with um, Anthonian Camo Shade. I find uh, null oil is a little bit too dark, and I don't want it to be brown. And so far, I use Nuln for Americans and Agrax for Germans. So so you're right. I use Anthonian for the British. So we have of everything, a shade for everything. Painting wise then the model will be done uh, but uh, I'll um, summarise the next steps after this is dry. Okay so that is the Agrax shade done. So as you can see it looks quite nice, uh, it doesn't darken the paint scheme too much. So next my favourite part for British models is the transfers. So sometimes I actually put a lot of crap in terms of stowage on the model so I don't have to put that many transfers on uh, but um, I do like British transfers um, because it adds a lot of colour to the tank so I'll put the transfers on and I'll explain why I put them on but <clears throat> I'm not going to go into too much detail of like the unit markings because uh, uh, Colours of War covers it really well and to have a nice quick internet search will cover it as well so um, I'll, do, I'll apply them, let them dry and uh, we'll see how it looks Okay, so that is finished. I finished off after doing the decals or transfers using a army painter uh, matte varnish. Um, it protects all the paint on the tank as well from like obviously when you're touching it and stuff. Um, some transfers did get a little bit broken uh, as I transferred them, but you can just count this to a little bit of battle damage, a little bit of chipping on paint as it goes through uh, uh, brushes and shrub and whatnot. So, um, as I said, this was going to be my OP tank, so uh, on the left is the 76th part of the Royal Artillery section of the 11th Armour Division, which is the Black Bull. I have a 27 bridge weight, um, Sherman's weigh about 30 tonnes. Um, so that 27 was the closest one I could get on my transfer sheet. It's probably without the gun. Uh, it probably is about 27. I got the tank serial number there and I got a little uh, white star so uh, the Americans might not shoot it. Um, and that is it. Um, pretty simple, effective. I did this within a day. Um, just a few hours really because it was just the one. But uh, I have the... Um, Comet Armoured Squadron box coming, actually two of them, so it might take me a little bit longer, especially since I've run out of the uh, British uh, spray, so uh, it'll be base coating by hand from now on, so hope you found this helpful, um, obviously newer players um, starting out your new British set, um, I'd say this is a fairly decent uh, way of going about it, so uh, um, hopefully uh, you'll uh, find it useful for your stuff. So. Like and subscribe as always and uh, wait for the uh, British Bulge Battle Report that will be coming soon.